to Radio Rufus. Hello and welcome to Radio Rufus. This is the latest and greatest in a frankly unprecedented and unrivaled streak of quality content from your favourite TikTok heartthrob, Rufus Rice, who also happens to be me. Each week we will take you through only the most supremely important news, games, sports, weather. It's your traditional radio show. I'm also joined by my producer, Aidan, who was a diversity hire because he is Irish. Um, how are you doing today, mate? I appreciate the hire, even if it was completely for diversity reasons. But before we get into it, I just want to bring you up a clip that I've actually seen kind of resurface lately. A clip? Yeah. I want to see right. if you have anything to say. Let me get my headphones on so I can have a listen. About this. There are too many podcasts and they're all exactly the same. They all talk about red flags and icks and funny tweets and astonishing facts. And they're all exactly the same. And they're all on my For You page. And they're all a group of lads who like, we're pretty funny. We should start a podcast. And you're not funny. You're exactly the same as all the other podcasts. And I know if I started a podcast, my podcast would be the same as all those other fucking podcasts. So there's literally no point ever to start a podcast or listen to a podcast ever um, so I'm never making one of those and I wouldn't make YouTube videos because they're too long and I'm lazy. Right. Yeah, I see what's gone on here. I did say that. Have you got any, any thoughts on the matter? This isn't a podcast. What is this? This, this is a radio show in the exact format of a podcast. Okay. So, so how is it any different? But then? in any way, in every way, it is fully a radio show. Two blokes in the swinging sixties. Cheating on their wives, drinking on the job, having long lunches and smoking indoors. Um, just bringing the audience everything you want to hear from around the world every week. I just don't see um, how that's a podcast, to be honest. Yeah, and that's, that's fair enough. Like yeah. Since the Middle Ages, suited up white men have said like mildly inappropriate things with their friends without it being referred to as a podcast, so why should this be? Exactly. Yeah, and it's set in the mid-1960s, as you can see by the beautiful set that we have. So podcasts aren't even going to be around for 50 years. Yeah, there's still like a good five decades of radio accusations and controversies before we hear Joe Rogan ask Jamie to fucking pull something up for the first time. Exactly. So let's get into our first segment, Not News. The most important stories from around the world this week. Mummified monkey remains have been found in luggage at Boston Airport. A pigeon suspected of being a Chinese spy was released by Indian police. Uh, armed forces were alerted to Harry Potter fan with a wand and a rescue cat refuses to eat food unless it comes with a side salad so really just just great stuff from all around content. there so our first story mummified monkey remains found in luggage at Boston Airport a passenger arriving in Boston attempted to smuggle four entire monkeys through security <laughs> last Thursday <laughs> oh sorry that is ridiculous a sniffer dog identified a strange scent emanating from a bag carried by a passenger from where else but the home of Ebola the Democratic Republic of the Congo <laughs> um, which is like the Republic of the Congo just a bit more Democratic. The passenger said the bag contained dried fish. On further examination, airport agents discovered it was four mummified monkey skeletons, including the entire skull. <laughs> <laughs> See, straight away, if I'm an employee at Boston Airport, I am completely ignoring that. I'm pretending I didn't see that. That really? is some shit out of a horror film. That is sort of the, I don't get paid enough to deal with this sort yeah. of like, is that what you would do? You would just let the monkey pass? 100%. <laughs> I'd need like a flamethrower and a peak Brendan Fraser before I went anywhere near a mummified Are monkey. you worried about getting cursed? Partially, yeah. Uh, and or, I don't or, think... Or diseased, which I think it, I'm more worried about really. Like, yeah. I don't know what those monkeys have. Uh-huh. They do not look very happy in this. Not at all. They look like something you would find digging up an old voodoo temple. <laughs> <laughs> and the fact he's tried to pass those clear, clearly <laughs> mammal skulls <laughs> off as fish is absolutely ridiculous. You would genuinely swear the whole world has learnt like, absolutely nothing from the past few years. There was a global pandemic because some prick ate like, a bat the size of your thumb and people are still trying to smuggle dead monkeys across the border. This looks like props from the Indiana Jones film. It really fucking it does. It really fucking does. I can't get it across to you how absolutely horrifying this picture is. And, you know, you always see, don't you, when you go around, and I don't want to stereotype here, mm. but there are sort of Jamaican aunts and uncles with plastic bags. They always have plastic bags. Always. And I'm always thinking, what's in them? This is what's in the Maybe it's this. Yeah. 
if there's like one positive to take away from it, it's that the Boston airport have finally stepped up security measures, which is very, very That is timely. good. <laughs> <laughs> that is the first 9-11 joke of this podcast, and we are how far in? That's not a 9-11 joke. That is oh. a, a Boston bombing joke. Oh, and you, but do you know the plane from 9-11 took off from Boston? Oh, fuck, from this it? airport, yeah. I didn't even yeah. mean that, but I suppose it was a 9-11 double joke. whammy. <laughs> We've got the, the Boston bombing and 9-11 in the same joke. Yeah. These mummified monkeys cause Boston Airport to have more thorough bag checks than it, I think it's a win-win. It's a net positive. What do you think he was going to do with the monkeys? I'm going to be honest, Rufus, I don't think I want to know what this fucker was doing. Do you doing think it's a sex thing? It absolutely is a sex thing. Is he shagging the mummified monkey remains? I don't know how that would work. But there's, there's no... Well, I, I was going to say there's no holes, but there are a few in the skulls that I'm looking, <laughs> currently looking at. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I've... I immediately, I've decided that this is a bloke who did this as well. This, uh, 100% percent a man. Yeah. Women don't get up to this sort Women, of shit. This is, this is like, this is boy humour. You and always see like, memes and stuff where it's like, yeah. this is why the male life expectancy is shorter. Yeah. This is one of them. And this is also why there's fucking diseases everywhere. On to our next story then. A pigeon suspected of being a Chinese spy was released by Indian police this week after no less than eight months detention. <laughs> How does that even work? They've questioned it in captivity for <laughs> eight months. I love how it says as well that they cleared him and they end up. Like, how do you communicate that to a bird? Like, you're sorry, you're you're free to go, Tweety. Like, what the fuck way does that work? Yeah, the pigeon was suspected of being a Chinese spy after it was captured at a port in Mumbai with two rings around its legs, carrying words that looked like Chinese characters. <laughs> Police suspected it was being used in espionage and detained it. Um, what do you think... Did they like water torture the pigeon? I have no idea. What would? How would you get answers out of a pigeon? All my experience in birds and like films or TV shows, they live in cages anyway. So how the fuck is being and they don't prison? speak English, famously, <laughs> <laughs> or, or like or Hindi, I guess. Did you see though that the pigeon was actually Taiwanese and they end up? Yeah. So after it was questioned, which I don't know why it took eight months. <laughs> Maybe there's some process things to look into there. <laughs> Maybe protocol was a bit long winded that they found it was actually a Taiwanese racing pigeon. And the rings around its legs were just to identify which pigeon it was in races, which I'm going to be honest. That was that was like, I would have thought of that before the Chinese spy thing, but maybe better safe than sorry. Yeah, they don't want to take any chance, chances. Although yeah. it is pretty racist from the Indians to just assume that the Taiwanese yeah, it is, bird isn't it? was Chinese. Like, they don't they're, assuming, assume. they're assuming that all Chinese people are spies. <laughs> <laughs> that too. <laughs> <laughs> that is terrible behavior. That is really racist. That's like me saying I'm surprised they didn't eat it, <laughs> which I would never do. Yeah, no, that would be out of line, Rufus. Our next story. Armed police were alerted to a Harry Potter fan with a wand. Over to the BBC now, actual BBC News, mm -hmm. where armed police raced to a hotel following reports of a man wielding a large knife. Upon arriving, they apprehended the target, who turned out to be a Harry Potter fan pretending to be a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> See, to be fair... This is why knife crime rates are so high in London. The police are too busy chasing down fucking wizards. And there's people out there wielding machetes around corners. Yeah, is this the worst use of police time you've ever seen? It's definitely up there. It's got to be up there. 100%. I think, so where I used to live, I used to live in a very dodgy part of the world in Indonesia. And what the police would like to do is instead of like solving crimes and doing like mm -hmm. police things, uh, they would set up roadblocks, right? on random highways and stuff. Right. And then pull over all the white people. Okay. Because they're the people with money. So they would find something wrong with you. Yeah. Like, so they'd, they'd be like, you weren't wearing your seatbelt. <laughs> and then, and it was a known procedure. You'd hand over your license with a hundred thousand rupiah, which is, sounds like a lot, but it's actually about five pounds. <laughs> <laughs> and then they would just give you your license back and you'd be free to go. So there's, there's some sort of method to that madness. Like they just, they just want the white man's money. Yeah, and they do that instead of um, police things. <laughs> this That's not even a joke. That is, that is how systemic the corruption is. That is, I mean, even at that, it's still better use of the police time because they're making a bit of money. These fuckers are just chasing down someone with a wand. And even though the policeman joked about the fact that, oh, at least it wasn't Voldemort. Did you see that bit? Like if police, it was, yeah, it says here, police have reported the man didn't pose a threat to anyone. <laughs> no <laughs> shit. <laughs> He's literally knocking about with a toy wand. What? fucking threats are you gonna do yeah but he is a huge nerd the man reportedly joked that there was no sign of voldemort great banter there so um that's oh, it's good that we haven't scripted any comedy today because i think that has 
pretty much sorted us. <laughs> On to our fourth story then. A rescue cat has refused to eat food unless it comes with a side salad. <laughs> See, to be fair, I sort of have some level of respect for this. Like that, that cat just knows what he wants. I would argue that this cat is probably more cultured than you are. There's no argument to be had there. That I don't think you've ever eaten a side salad in your life. I've had a Caesar salad. <laughs> right, you put okay. like, the chicken and the bacon in it. That's my fucking wheelhouse. Did you th- just sort of use the salad as a vehicle for the chicken, bacon, croutons, and sauce? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah, was, right, exactly. All those things with like a tiny bit of lettuce, maybe like an onion chopped up through it. Maybe but, an onion. Yeah. Could could if we're getting if we're getting crazy. Could, could potentially be an onion. The cat is reportedly fixated on human scran and loves to chow down on bagels, burgers, edamame, meatballs, cheese, muffins, and crisps. Which, if you uh, are in Boston, are crisps. Um, so this guy is a proper gourmand. Like <laughs> this guy, this guy's got an advanced palate. There's a lot of kids who wouldn't eat all that stuff. There's a few words there that I've never heard of. Yeah. What did you say? Edamame? Edamame, yeah. Is I know. Type of cheese? You mostly eat potatoes. So, somewhat, yeah. And sometimes you have chips. Some Like if, if the occasion strikes, I might have chips instead. Instead yeah. of potatoes. Yeah. yeah. Right. A big change up. Yeah, edamame. I mean, that's. Is it cheese? <laughs> Wait, do you actually not know what that is? No. You actually don't. I have no idea. I know we were doing is. a bit where we were joking about you being an no, like, uncultured swine, but no clue what an edamame. Is. You're, I think you're confusing it with edam, which is a that chip. is yes. Edamame is, is um, Japanese soybeans that you would get as a starter at a sushi restaurant. When the fuck would an Irishman ever be eating Japanese soybeans? Do they not have sushi in Ireland? Not really. I've never had sushi. Have you not? No. That is incredible. Maybe we'll have to do that on a future episode. I'll bring in some. You're a big sushi guy, aren't you? I am a big sushi guy. Anyway, getting back to this cat. There is a absolutely hilarious picture of him going back and forth between sort of that cat food shit mm. and a lovely leafy green side salad, <laughs> I love which has a dressing on it specifically for the cat. The cat just completely turns his nose up at like anything Purina or Felix. It just it, that, that cat wants a, a side salad. Yeah, exactly. So, oh no, 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 it's too far too far too fatty for me. It is very smart for a cat, to be fair. Like, I have had some fucking stupid cats over the years. I don't know. I think this cat is probably on its last legs, to be honest. I doubt it can digest all that stuff. Yeah, that's true. That is a fucking, that's a lot of different shit to be eating. It would be bad for a human to eat that much different shit. Never mind. (laughs) I had a, a litter of kittens whenever I was like 10 or 11 that we were digging holes for fence posts out in the garden. And overnight, it was like pissing down with rain. The holes were dug already. It was just like a really stormy night. Really? The next morning, I went outside and was like trying to find the cats. I was like, where the fuck's Fluffy at? Went up the garden. One of the cats fell in to the fence pole, like the fence post hole. Right. And drowned and all the other kittens tried to jump in to save it. Oh, I thought they were going to jump in to eat it. Well, they might have added it after. Maybe. But all four of the cats fucking drowned in this like hole that was meant to be for a fence post. And this prick's out here ordering side salads. Yeah. So wait. This is an advanced cat. It's a bougie cat, yeah. isn't it? This is the sort of cat that has like a starter before a football match, if you know <laughs> what I mean. Like yeah. in, the, in the box. And I'm puffing on a frankly quite chody cigar here as we get into our next segment. It's the weather. Drizzle kicks coming at you now. Bad news for all my Madagascans out there as tropical cyclone Alvaro has made landfall. It's been gathering in the southern Indian Ocean for a while and it's been quite bad. 16,000 people affected, but it's not as bad as Hurricane Freddy which hit Madagascar last year and affected 33,000, so about half as bad as that. There has only been six casualties. The police actually released the names of the dead to date. They are Alex, Marzi, Melman, Gloria, Kowalski, and King Julian. (laughs) God rest them, to be fair. Great fucking film. Right. If King Julian... King Julian might be the best character of all time in anything. There's definitely a conversation to be had there. Definitely a conversation. It's sort of a toss-up between him and Lightning McQueen. If you were knocking about like a Lightning McQueen t-shirt or something back in the day, you were getting the bitches. Seven-time Piston Cup winner. Yeah. You can't can't just take that away from him. Although, I don't really... (laughs) Whenever he just gives up the race to let the old fucker win, I wasn't about to. <laughs> like, I wanted, I wanted. Mate, if you're a true champion, you're not doing. Yeah, that. I yeah. want my champions to be cutthroat. Like, Absolutely. there's no time for giving pensioners a fucking courtesy medal. Yeah, fully agree. In other news, in Ghana, it's absolutely roasting, and in Greenland, it's fucking frigid. 
So there we go. That's the weather. Now on to Snatch of the Day, which is our sports report. Super Bowl happened last weekend. Did. And it was billed as sort of the Taylor Swift Super Bowl. Did you watch it? I watched clips of it, but anything, literally everything I heard about it was all around Taylor Swift. Exactly. Didn't hear anything about the actual players. Which um, surprised me because she's not in the team. <laughs> I don't I don't know if you didn't know that, but from what I'm hearing, she was like sort of an MVP mm. candidate, but she's actually not in the squad. She's not built for American football. I don't know what sport she will be built for, but it's definitely not fucking NFL. No. She seems like a netball girly. Yeah, a netball's bit. probably a fair shout. Yeah. Or like body. She's quite lofty, something. isn't she? I feel like Taylor Swift would probably be quite good at netball. She's very long, I think. Yeah, she is lengthy. Yeah. You're right about that, actually. Yeah. I heard a pundit say, I did watch it, and I heard a pundit say maybe the presence of Taylor Swift takes the pressure off of Patrick Mahomes, who who is a player and is also a multiple time Super Bowl champion. And I would just like to say to that pundit, can't remember your name, sorry, but you are you're an American, so I hope this gets to you. Uh what the fuck are you on about? <laughs> He is the most important player in this whole game. He's won two Super Bowls and he's a potential a future GOAT. And you're saying the presence of Taylor Swift might take the pressure off in the most watched Super Bowl of all time. Um, that's not really comedy. That's just sort of, um, I just wanted to highlight that you are a cretin. Next up, news from America once again. They do love a bit of sport. They do. The new season of the Camel and Ostrich Racing League is about to begin. <laughs> For my first question on this yeah. was, do they mix? Like, are the camels and ostriches racing each other? Or mm. is it kind of separate? It feels unfair. Yeah. It feels unfair. I don't know what's, what is faster, a camel or an ostrich. Can you quickly look that up? I feel like an ostrich would be quicker. But that might I don't know. I, yeah. Camels got quite a lot of momentum, but it does feel like they're different leagues. An ostrich can run as fast as 25 miles an hour, while the slower camels will reach speeds of between 5 and 10 miles an hour. Oh, it's not even close. They're not racing each other then? No. Because that's like some... I imagine the camels would have been like fucking oil money. Like that, I pictured them as like the man cities of these leagues, but apparently shit. I thought when uh, I first heard about the camel and ostrich racing league, I immediately assumed it was African. Yeah. But no, this is in West Virginia, mm-hmm. which I didn't know there were camels or ostriches <laughs> in West Virginia. <laughs> I've got a lot of questions about this. Yeah. Um, are there, like, constructors? Are there teams? <laughs> like, you know, this, the Ferrari ostriches? There, I would assume there is, not just because this kind of seems to actually be well put together, but I read that this is the 65th annual event. This isn't something that they just decided to go ahead with last you know, year. You know what's funny? That is actually older than Formula One. Yeah. It, Maybe Formula One fucking tuck the idea from these ostriches. Do they like line up on the grid? Like, <laughs> like you have a qualifying lap. Yeah. I love the fact though, like people would think that like NASCAR is hillbilly, but these fuckers are just like, you know what? What could make it even more redneck is if we get on the back of an ostrich and race each other. Maybe there's like a guy like Enzo Ferrari and he's like the greatest ostrich breeder. And maybe he's got the fastest ostriches and like kids who grow up watching yeah. the camel and ostrich racing league <laughs> will go, oh, I want to race for that guy. Yeah, He's probably called like Billy McYanka or something. Yeah, he was the pioneer behind it all. Yeah, he's probably highly inbred as well. Did you see how it started? The whole yeah. like ostrich racing? Do you know? Do you know about the history? So in 1959, the editor of the Enterprise wrote a fake story about camels racing in Virginia City. The Chronicle didn't realise it was a hoax and printed it. The following year, they borrowed camels from the San Francisco Zoo, took them to Virginia City to race them. That's where it began. 65 years later, they're still doing it. I was wondering where the camels came from. Yeah. To be honest. Because there doesn't seem to be loads in West Virginia. I haven't been there, but I wouldn't have thought so. I've never been to America at all, but I don't picture there being many camels or ostriches just like knocking about. No, like they're definitely. So they must have nicked them from the zoo. They're not like fucking household pets. Like you, you they're uh, they're sort of exotic. You're, yeah. you're having a steal them from somewhere. I'm sort of currently imagining like an ostrich taking a racing line <laughs> around round Silverstone or something. And like, is there a like how long of the race? Is it like more of an endurance race or is it you know a sprint? I would imagine it's like a short distance sprint, like because, a horse. Maybe it's like a horse race. Yeah, mainly because the average fucking girth of an American. There's going to be sore on an ostrich's back. That is true, actually. They yeah. they are sort of... But then again, well, let's, maybe, be, oh, let's be honest. They are mostly obese. Yeah, they are. 
And an ostrich has only got skinny legs. Yeah, fucking, it's, it's all neck and then just a bit of fluff. Yeah. American is not, like, it's not taking true. the weight of an American. Yeah. Although, if you look at horse racing, they just hire midgets for that. Yeah, do you think they get, like, the skinniest Americans? Which would probably be, like, a proper... Fucking 16 20, stone. Yeah, 16 <laughs> stone to, to do that. I feel sorry for those ostriches now. So we'll keep you posted as the season goes on. We'll um, give you some of the results from some of the ostrich grand prix and we'll uh, tell you who wins the constructors championship at the end of the season now i'd like to come on to our next segment our first bit of viewer interaction actually mm-hmm. in the show shagony uncle we uh, to play on agony aunt mm-hmm. shagony uncle very clever genius <laughs> uh so i asked my audience um for your for their problems and i'd like to chime in some, with some extremely important help uh but this unfortunately is the exact sort of thing my audience is totally useless at because um this is the sort of thing i was getting sent through after asking for genuine problems and dilemmas this is what i received uh do a line on camera my boyfriend watches your tiktoks and plays with himself i've just got hit by a car i've got scabies i think my girlfriend might be a member of the taliban and might ask <laughs> <laughs> and my ass cheeks keep chafing, but I kind of like the pain. So fuck me. The last two are very interesting. Uh, we need a follow up on that Taliban one in the next episode. Yeah, I didn't go back to him, <laughs> <laughs> but I did did read that. I'm. There's a few issues with these. Firstly, are any of these dilemmas? Not really. <laughs> I've all... just been hit by a car. Is not really a dilemma. <laughs> yeah. So that is the sort of average viewer I have. But there were some people who sent in some proper problems. So we will try and give them a bit of lip service first one hello shagony uncle i've fallen in love with a stripper after an eventful night i ended up inside a gentleman's club for my first time would you believe ended up talking to daddy issues on legs for at least an hour and at no point did she push for a dance of course i got one anyway because she was the most gorgeous person i've ever seen in my life was worth every penny i was asking about her tattoos and she told me her instagram and said to message her for the artist we were messaging back and forth all night but the replies have been ridiculously slow since one day minimum but still seem enthusiastic when they come through i'm absolutely in love with this woman and over message have confirmed that i'm not just some creepy client overstepping her boundaries what's the best move you are my only hope well that doesn't um fill me with confidence if i'm the only hope not at all it's an interesting one isn't it because um i think this has um she's using you for money or written all over it yeah absolutely especially if she's trying to sort of play along with it, she's not going to try and force him to get a dance. But whenever he's thinking like, oh, she really likes me and he b- buys a dance, that's exactly what she's going for. That's but, the angle she's playing and you're fucking eating it up. There is a thing to remember though that, you know, strippers must also be looking for love. Yeah. That's got to be true. There's, I guess so, right? If you look at the average clientele in a strip club, I don't imagine there's many desirable partners in there, though. No, especially in this country, because it's mostly sort of weird grandpas. Yeah. Yeah. It's something that I never really got. I know it's like a big thing for like a stag do or something and stuff like that, but I've never actually been to a strip club. No. But the idea of sitting at a table next to all my friends whilst they're just collectively getting hard that doesn't really that doesn't <laughs> it's do just like school all over again <laughs> um yeah this is this is a problematic one apart with the messaging angle you know messaging back and forth but the replies have been ridiculously slow one day minimum that is my sort of hinge average though because you you can't give them too much information before you go on a date mm. so you're you're back and forth like one one i think the messaging is absolutely fine they still seem enthusiastic oh but this this feels dangerous i think um Take it as far as you can, and if she asks you for money, um, just get out of there. Yeah, that that message is inevitably coming. But the whole, like, I know some people will try and play it mysterious for a bit and hold off in the replies. She just doesn't seem interested. Like, this fucker just wanted a payday. She got it. Yeah, like, it, it's a rogue one, but I don't think, you know, it's, it's one of those things. You know when you run a hot bath yeah. and you, like, you dip the toe in, maybe you put a whole leg in, and you might come out with that just red ring, like below the waterline, you're, <laughs> yeah. you're, you basically just singed your entire leg. But it was worth it to see if you could get in five minutes early, if you see what I mean. Yeah, I get where you're coming from there. So, yeah, 
um, dip the dip the toe in probably, but not the gooch straight away because you <laughs> might end up getting burned. Right, next one. Shags my girlfriend's flatmate. Pretty f- sure she found out. Which country will I be hardest to find? Did you have any thoughts about this? Because I think I have actually nailed down an exact country. Is it Mongolia by any chance? Mongolia. Yeah. Now I I see the thought process there. Yeah. No one knows anything about Mongolia. Uh huh. Especially and also it's very good for like extradition. I hear. Um, right. <laughs> I think there's a problem in Mongolia because I'm assuming that this is a white bloke. True. And I think you might stand out a bit in the Gobi Desert. You're standing out like a fucking sore thumb. And there aren't loads of people to see you. Mm-hmm. But you can't really pull up to a sort of tribal village <laughs> in your um, Exeter Uni rugby polo <laughs> shirt. And blend in. Yeah, no, you're really, you're, you're sticking out there. So Mongolia might not be the best shout. You got any other suggestions? Yeah, so immediately I thought of the race angle and I eliminated sort of all of Africa, <laughs> India, China. Although like, you know, if you are, if you're Indian, then that's fine, isn't it? Yeah. But I thought we need to go somewhere predominantly white here. So you blend in. Did this fella state his ethnicity at the start of this? He did not, but I'm going to assume he's white. Okay, so I'm thinking we got to go white here, and I was thinking sort of Eastern Europe, one of the ex-Soviet nations who's sort of still re- rebuilding from the Cold War. Some fucking Iron Curtain shit. Yeah, so I was narrowed it down to sort of Moldova, Bulgaria, Romania in there. And my uh, advice to you, if you are watching, is um, get yourself a headscarf, put all your belongings in it and tie it to a stick and walk out i get a flight to sofia bulgaria walk out into the wilderness until you come across a village sit there and eat raw meat and drink vodka until the end of your days this is definitely a good way to lay low for a while anyway she's not going to find you there mate okay next one how do i live with an ex in the same house and his new girlfriend have you ever been in an awkward living situation like this thankfully not no but it, that just that would be painful how, how do you even get into a position like that Hmm. Yeah, it is an odd arrangement. You, I've, I'm assuming you've agreed to do this, unless it was kind of in between where you'd already signed the lease and then yeah, kind of got with someone else. Bloody landlords, am I right? <laughs> yeah. But either way, it's fucked, and uh, I wouldn't envy anyone in that situation. No, this is a horrible situation. I feel terrible for you. I've immediately assumed because I'm a bad person that this this girl, and I know that this actually came from a girl. Oh, really? Which is interesting considering my audience there aren't many (laughs) i've sort of immediately assumed that she wants to drive a wedge between the boyfriend and his new girlfriend yeah i can like that i sort of think she's not okay with this no if she's sending in for help so my advice would be you know a lot about you know very intimately your ex right Mm -hmm. you've probably seen his bum hole on numerous occasions (laughs) and once you go there you, there's something you can't really get back. Yeah, there, you know there's what I no mean? turning back from staring down the bar. I think asshole. I think once you see someone's rectum, yeah, your relationship changes forever, and there's no way you can stop it. You're bonded for life if you've, if you've seen that shit. Like, yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so you know a lot about him. You know his likes and dislikes. You know his sort of thing. I think he, if I was her, I would do like little girlfriend things to try and psych him out. Mm. if you know what i mean yeah I get, like you know what sort of thing he likes you know his favorite tunes maybe you have them playing in the house when he gets home yeah maybe you'd be cooking food you know his his favorite that sort of thing and just try and get under the skin drive them apart hopefully yeah. one of them moves out and the house is yours bosh that, that works that is some fucking god tier manipulation it's sort of stephen bartlett-esque it is yeah. that, that get them crying on the podcast in your own home that should be good. Now, on to our next segment, Out of Packet, which is not a thinly veiled drug reference. Uh, my producer, Aiden, has looked for a weird product, which knowing him is probably going to be a pot of gold, and you've ordered it off of a new piece of technology called the interwebs. Yes. I haven't seen it before, but I will react to it now. So, kind of going along the lines of the actual name of the segment, Out of Packet... I got you one of these bad boys. So it's actually, contrary to what it actually looks like, it is simply just a very tiny gardening tool. For the viewer. 
This is a Coke spoon. No, no. <laughs> it is a gardening tool that just so happens to be perfectly nostril shaped. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is the title of this um, Coke spoon on Amazon? Gardening tool. It's not. A, I don't know what you're referring to. <laughs> it's a gardening tool key ring. Yes. And it is. It's a shovel, isn't it? It is. Yes. Yeah. So, like, if I wanted to snort a bit of this cigar dust. <laughs> Or dig a hole. Or dig a hole. Yeah. But there's no soil in here. So maybe you could get a little bit on the end. A thing like that. And, um... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> how does... How does that... <laughs> Why did I do that? I have no idea. The only thing... <laughs> The only thing it works. It does work. The only thing I will say about it, though, is that it's actually a lot sharper than I expected. So, if for any reason you were to put it into like a tiny bag, yeah, it, it might cause an accident and rip spillage. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know why you would do that. Obviously. Yeah, just and the off chance that you just so happen to be putting yeah. our very tiny gardening tool into a clear see-through bag. <laughs> wow, that was really like. Block me up. I feel like there might be a few sneezes coming <laughs> down the line. You look, you visibly look in pain, Rufus. It's just sort of really itchy at the moment. Is that usually what happens in that situation? I wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. Uh, fair enough. No. Um. So yeah, bit of cigar dust up the nose never killed anybody. <laughs> wow. It, how much did this cost? That was six pounds fifty nine. I think six pounds fifty nine. Uh huh. For this. Yeah. Okay, so that's extremely expensive for what it is. I had to go to like our props department and be like, here, say nothing, but I, I need a Coke spoon here by tomorrow. And <laughs> they just, they didn't bat an eye, to be fair to them. Uh, didn't even question it. They were just like, yeah, yeah, no worries. It was sat at my desk whenever I came out of like a recording. I was like, fucking yes. So if you were to rate it on its looks, its use, and its sniffing I, I, I power, would say like as a gardening tool, it's pretty poor. I wouldn't, really advise any if there are any amateur gardeners out there this is probably not the thing you want to dig a potato patch for example but maybe um if you sort of love skiing if you know what I if mean. if you were to be in a rave in a 90s adidas tracksuit yeah then um maybe this would be your sort of thing it looks quite stylish i have to say it's a nice color and stuff it is a bit sharp but yeah. after repeated usage it would probably erode down a little it would bit it'll be a bit more blunt very good so that's actually um pretty good i'm gonna keep that i think yeah it's, it's a practical for later. gift yeah it is a practical gift um uh, maybe one for your mum or your dad <laughs> this christmas now you know we lads here in the studio we like to you know be guys be dudes have a laugh so Indeed. each week we're gonna play uh, a game of our choosing in our new segment gamey schumer Today, we're going to play hide and seek. I've volunteered to hide. This is only within the studio, of course. Aiden is going to count to 30, and uh, we'll see who wins. If I don't get found after five minutes, I will win. And there's a punishment for the loser. 30, 29, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck are you doing? Can they? I was hoping I would sort of be camouflaged against the floor. You do. Your, your black suit, funny enough, doesn't massively match the maroon carpet but it you know it was a good idea although unfortunately Rufus that does mean you lose this week's gamey shimmer oh, for fuck's sake. which also means you have to get a mouthful of cinnamon I was really hoping I could sort of pull off a miracle victory there once yeah. we decided to play hide and seek um, I was hoping for a bit of camouflage I was hoping you'd sort of look up at your eye line sort yeah. of look around be like he's not here yeah, yeah. although the first step I would have took to try and look at you, I would have fucking tripped over your corpse. <laughs> <laughs> you know what else that didn't help? True. Before I'd even opened my eyes, I could hear you sniggering from my left ear. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I was, I was, I was thinking about maybe I should go in this corner over here. Yeah. 
maybe maybe like if i just went in there maybe i could fit into this nook yeah you sort of wouldn't see me i decided to go floor in the end but still sort of lost i can see i can see your logic like there is there's is something behind that maybe maybe in a different colored suit like a ron burgundy-esque type one but in yeah, that I sort of get up i need i need to get my other suit out. maybe my smoking jacket would blend in a bit yeah, better. yeah it would have right. done to be fair anyway the punishment for this week is a classic uh first invented in 1833 oh was it by professor john cinnamon <laughs> it's the cinnamon <laughs> challenge you know what's sort of coincidental as well i've you got the perfect implement just so happen to have a spoon for it that's wonderful <laughs> Let me um, just uh, suavely and smoothly get the cinema now. <laughs> it will also be interesting to see if, if this gardening tool actually does work with powders. <laughs> right. <laughs> Can you open it? <laughs> I can't Let me do try. it. Oh, I fucking nearly done it just by opening it. <laughs> That is fucking stinking. Yeah, I was wondering. I was wondering, like, would we need sort of you spoon? You can't fully take it off if you want to scoop in it. You can. Yeah, do you want me to get it? You, you must be a big, strong man. I, I literally can't even open um, it. Do you remember in school whenever like the teacher would come in and ask for someone to help was with it chairs? Always you? <laughs> that was always me. Mate, you would love that as well. Yeah, I was. Right. I was thinking, everyone was thinking, like, who is this guy carrying all these chairs? But I just thought it was a teacher's pet. Should I, am I going no lube here? Yeah, fuck it. Raw dog this shit. <sighs> For fuck's sake, right. Big heap, big heap, right? Try not to get too much cinnamon on the set. <laughs> you ready? Ready? Right, yeah, down yeah. the hatch. What <sighs> <laughs> 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 Fucking hell. You good? Oh my god. Oh, I'm a I, different man. I have never seen a man with so much desperation in his eyes that whenever Rufus reached his hand out and asked for my water. <coughs> There's tears in my eyes. There's fucking tears in my eyes from watching you. Was it just the, the first attempt at swallowing just game over? I made the same mistake as always. I try to eat the cinnamon. <laughs> <laughs> Thing is, the flavour is actually fine. I don't mind a bit of cinnamon sprinkled on top of something, but a fucking mouthful of pure cinnamon is enough for me. Oh, mate. Is it stuck Definitely going to need a few minutes to recover from that. Is it stuck in your teeth? No, it's sort of just like stuck on the roof of my mouth. Like, uh, yeah. Do you want to have a bit? <sighs> I won hide and seek, Rufus. <sighs> yeah, but just for a laugh. <laughs> yeah, give me it. Yeah. Okay. Can I also, I'm going to decide the amount. I don't want you sh fucking shoveling. No, just, just have a little bit because yeah. otherwise you're going to choke. Can I have the water back? Have you fucking infected it with cinnamon though? I've finished it. Right. There's cinnamon on my script. Oh. Don't do loads, honestly. It's absolutely disgusting. Is that a fair amount, or is that yeah? Much? That's right. You'll at least get get the idea. Like, don't open your mouth, mate. You did a lot better than me. It's nasty, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's really bad. I can't swallow it. No, you can't. You can't. <laughs> Oh, Rufus, what the fuck have you got me doing? Yeah, so I had probably about four times as much as that, and it was absolutely terrible. We're going to need a hoover in here. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to do another one just for... No, I don't, I don't <laughs> want to do another one. Yeah, Gamey Schumer is a roaring success, if I, if I had to be totally honest. Yeah. I, <laughs> I've thoroughly enjoyed that. I have never seen so much desperation. <laughs> Do you know? Do you have trokra over here? Sorry, trokra. It's like a trokra box where you put money in a box around like Easter, and it goes off to Africa. 
It looked like the fucking eyes Sorry, that's not funny. of those children <laughs> on the side of that box pleading for some sort of fucking liquid. It was like me having a bit of cinnamon. Yeah. Oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> now, I'd like to move on, if we may, to Invention Center. This is every week I come up with a new thing and I present it to Aiden and he's going to give it a go and see what he thinks. Now, um, I thought I'd invented this and then I'd been told by people in the office it does already exist. Um, but here we are. The camera just wants to have a look at that. I'll just put it down in front of you, Aiden. Am I allowed to open my eyes yet? There you go. Can I look? Have a look. <laughs> <laughs> you know when you can't decide whether you want a coffee or a tea? Yes. What about both? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering what took you so long, but it's, it's lovely and warm. You've put a lot of effort in it. It is lovely and warm. I had to boil a kettle for that. <laughs> <laughs> so I believe that's a herbal tea with a um, with a capsule coffee all in one drink. So it really just has everything you need. Have you tried this drink? Absolutely not. It's disgusting, mate. <laughs> I'm going to give it a go because it smells. It just smells like coffee. It's overpowering. It might be good. Tea. It, there, I am worried about it being good and you quite enjoying it and me yeah. have just gotten you a nice warm drink, which is fun. not the point of this segment. <laughs> Do you know what flavour herbal tea it is? There's some <sighs> shit one. Foreign. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be completely honest with you, Rufus. That is lovely. Is it? Is it good? It just tastes. It just tastes like a really nice coffee. You cannot taste the tea at all. Really, the bag is still in there. I've let it. I've let it stew for a seriously long period of what time. What is that lump? What? The- yeah, that's the bag. Probably. <laughs> there is a bit like- of bag in it. <laughs> I feel like there's a bag in my mouth. I feel like I'm pulling a pube out of my teeth. <laughs> Pass it over. Let's have a sip. One more second. Fucking. Oh, that's up. quite good. Going to be very rejuvenated for the end of this podcast. In the the lovely We Heart Oats Glebe Farm mug. Have a oh, don't we're not spon- mate. We're not we're not promoting a, the a fuck promoting. Farm. The, yeah, fuck Glebe Farm, mate. <laughs> the purest British oats my ass. <laughs> <laughs> right. Have a swig. Tell me that's nothing but pure unadulterated coffee. It's coffee with a weird edge, but it's not unpleasant, is it's it? Not, if you give me that, if I ordered that in a cafe. I wouldn't notice that there was something wrong with it. I'd probably think that, that would go down as one of my nicer coffees. Yeah, I fully agree. That is, like, compared to some artisan shit, out in yeah. Indonesia, they have the sort of coffee, so they, they get the monkeys to eat the coffee bean, and then it goes, passes through their digestive system, then they poo it out, and, and it becomes this really sort of fertile coffee thing. Really distinct, strong flavour, and they sell that at a premium to consumers mostly uh gullible tourists of course but what the fuck is going on in indonesia yeah it's called copy luwak you can look it up it comes out monkeys asses and then they drink it this is better than that it is it's fair to say it tastes nicer than coffee that has come out of a fucking monkey's hole but it i admire the fact that you sort of kind of you thought you were on to something yeah, I was really sad to hear that this concept had already been invented by Gavin and Stacey, which I haven't seen. Where I've they seen ca- it, but they called it that. a toffee or a key. A key. Yeah, which I've I could of- I could do with both of those. Yeah, to be honest. I've heard of a key. Anyway, that's yours. Thank you. That's actually an unintended benefit of this because I just wanted to see you struggle to drink that. It's I'm not a big coffee man, but this is lovely. But I've invented a new drink. Oh, sorry. We're getting a call, everybody. We're getting a call. Wow. Okay, right. Thanks for that. Thank you. Thanks so much. We've just had a message come in from our American correspondent, Mafatma Gandhi in Dallas. Uh, This is today's news. Today, of course, being the 22nd of November, 1963. The President of the United States, John F. Kennedy has been fucking murked. The presidential motorcade was parading through the city as part of a mission to smooth over tensions within the Democratic Party. It might be a bit early, but I think it's safe to say it hasn't been a success. (laughs) Uh, That is fair to say. At approximately half past 12 today, he collapsed in the back of the state car. It was initially unclear whether he had been yinged or sniped, but it became apparent a suspect had long shot at him from a high window, is what it says here. That's Mafatma words, Mafatma's words, not mine. The suspect is still on the run. I just wanted to say 
good luck to him and it's not a crime if nobody catches you <laughs> that was all on that piece of paper was it um that's what's been faxed through from yeah. the main man mafatma in dallas <laughs> jfk is dead jesus christ that's a lot to take in at this early yeah. stage of the morning jfk <laughs> jfk of course done for just fucking killed <laughs> Imagine your country's president getting fucking quick scoped like that. Yeah, mate, it's literally just some Call of Duty basement dweller has got big <laughs> ideas into his head. He's bagged a real gun and just sort of quick scoped him. We believe that Vice President Lyndon B. Johnson will swiftly become the new president. His nickname, like JFK's, is pretty unfortunate. Obviously, just fucking killed, but his is LBJ. Lyndon B. Johnson, which sounds like a Spanish blowy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. It really fucking LBJ. <laughs> um, and honestly, I haven't got a clue about American politics, so I can't provide a political analysis on how this is going to affect the future of the USA. Um, so I guess we'll never know. I'm sure they're in line for some great presidents in the future. Seems like that's inevitable. Yeah. Well, there's been a succession of great men so far, so I can only consider that it would be going forward. Not someone who would like spunk on a dress in an office for example. yeah no I, I could never see that happen in america it that's just, disgusting nah yeah uh, especially a president they, they wouldn't put someone like that hey, someone this is an, like that this is an advice from this podcast to all future presidents pop a johnny on it mate you won't have that problem <laughs> good point yeah <laughs> mate that's his own problem for having unsafe sex and if you don't want to be the next monica Lewinsky, um wrap it up at the end of the wire here our correspondent has also said and I quote, P.S. Martin Luther King has a terrible hairline. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a fair assessment too. You yeah. know what, like, I kind of took away from this? The fact that he probably went out for like a bit of a joyride to clear his head and he returned home without one. <laughs> like, Jackie was just sitting beside him in the car and didn't know what the fuck was going on, just enjoying the breeze. And it's got to be pretty peak for her. I, f I imagine that's the sort of thing that would ruin your day. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it might put a dampener in the rest of your week. Yeah, you'd be maybe a bit miffed, slightly yeah. pissed off. I feel like if you threw the buzzwords, you and Jackie, backseat, an explosive head at JFK, he would assume he was in for the time of his life, not the fucking ending of it. Yeah, I have to say, when I did read the, the headline, uh, I thought we were in for a bit of a Marilyn Monroe situation, <laughs> yeah. if you catch my drift. Um, but, you know, this is, this is interesting. I feel like if I could you know, go back in time to November 1963, what I would do is the day of this assassination, I would buy a rifle and kill JFK just before this guy's about to kill him. <laughs> because there's a lot of conspiracy theories yeah. around it. You know, maybe it was the Russians, mm -hmm. CIA a bit dodgy, you know, FBI. Maybe it was LBJ himself <laughs> who wanted to become the president. Maybe the mafia. Could have been an inside job. I'm, I'm good, yeah. I'm going to fucking cycle them out because whoever it was who planned this, they didn't see me coming. True. So I'll just kill him before and they'll be like, oh, what the, f what the fuck's going on? <laughs> now they're like, there's a conspiracy to like do what we do. He's just done exactly what we were going to do like 10 seconds before. He's He must have an insider, right? The fucker perched up on the sixth floor of this building. Yeah. He's, like, he, getting he's ready for the sniper. Yeah. And like, I've already- Who the I've, fuck's JFK? It's a, it's a kill steal. <laughs> it's honestly, it's a kill steal. I'll be up on the I'll be up on the grassy knoll. I'll be shooting from there. I'll be the second shooter. <laughs> this brick doesn't even get an assist for it. Just a pure, pure stone. Yeah, kill. yeah, yeah. Not, not anything. It's just- Kill steal, honestly. It's a shame, though, that this fucker in this sixth floor building wasn't around for COD because he would have got his diamond camos in no time. Godlike. He yeah, would have been godlike. He would have been. This is If Someone You Loved by Lewis Capaldi was from the perspective of Lee Harvey Oswald. Just a humble Dallas gentleman who works in a warehouse. All I did was watch the president parade through the fairgrounds The feds planted a gun, they planted a rest They planted three cartridges in a sniper's nest I know it sounds insane, but I've been framed Everyone thinks I'm the man that shot JFK It was the FBI Don't trust LBJ There are some dodgy blokes inside the CIA Might be the Mafia The KGB is sketch All I know is 
wish that I didn't quickscope Kennedy's head Ask the umbrella man if he made the hole There was another chap up on the grassy knoll Check the Zapruder film, please reinvestigate They've covered up a fat conspiracy to merge JFK <laughs> so there we go every week radio rufus wednesday 6 p.m youtube spotify for the latest and greatest in top bands from your favorite 1960s radio station back to you back to us in the studio <laughs>